That's right, and that rain and heavy snowfall in the Rockies could bring Lake Mead an increase in water levels. Snowfall than normal in the mountains there that feed into the Colorado River. Abel Garcia spoke to people at Lake Mead Marina. Lake Mead, America's largest reservoir, is drying up faster than it can replenish itself and could soon become a dead pool. What's to blame for this phenomenon? It's easy to point to the arid desert as the culprit, but what are the true driving factors? What is the current water level? Watch this video to the end to find out. The southwestern United States is notable for accommodating the three hottest deserts in North America, the Chihuahuan, Mojave, and Sonoran deserts. When you consider this, you realize it's only fitting that America's largest reservoir, Lake Mead, is located within this region. Since its inception almost a century ago by the embankment of the Colorado River, Lake Mead has been a lifeblood to the citizens of Nevada, Arizona, and California, and today it continues to supply millions of Americans with its life-giving resource. Created in 1936 by the construction of one of the most iconic and impressive hydropower projects in the world, the Hoover Dam, Lake Mead facilitates the growth of industry across America by producing water for hydropower generation, crop irrigation, recreational activities, and municipal consumption. It measures 112 miles along its shoreline, has a surface area of 247 square miles, and can hold up to 29 million acre-feet of water. It has a power generation capacity of 2,080 megawatts, producing an average of 4 billion kilowatt hours of electricity per year, enough to power about 1.3 million homes. The lake supplies water to California's Central Valley, the largest food-producing region of the country, as well as 90% of the water used by Las Vegas and 40% of that used by Phoenix. The Lake Mead National Recreation Area, a protected area spanning over 2,000 kilometers around the lake, sees an average of 7 million visitors per year, many of who come here for fishing, boating, kayaking, and hiking. Lake Mead gets all of its water from the Colorado River, which originates from La Boudre Pass Lake in the Never Summer Mountains, a mountain range in Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. Before this water reaches Lake Mead, it has to traverse 1,234 kilometers of land running through four states, the Grand Canyon and several other dams along its main stem. The Colorado River itself gathers its water from tributaries that empty into it as it courses through the southwest, but much of its water comes from snowpack atop the Rocky Mountains that melts year-round to supply the river with a continuous stream. However, a 23-year mega drought and growing water demands from an ever-increasing population have affected Lake Mead in recent decades, threatening agriculture, industry, and tourism in the area. A retrospective review of the data used to allocate water between the seven Colorado River states in 1922 found that the forecast relied on information from an exceptionally wet period in history. The hydrologic data initially indicated that the Colorado River's annual flow was 16.4 million acre-feet, but this figure was later revised to 13.5 million acre-feet, with some experts suggesting even lower estimates. However, since 2000, the river's annual flow has hovered around 12 million acre-feet per year. This means Lake Mead has been burdened with supporting a population more than 20 times its intended capacity, utilizing only three-quarters of the water supply. This has placed an immense strain on the water body. Picture this, the largest reservoir in the United States, which supplies water to over 35 million people in a state of stagnation. Not a pretty sight, is it? This is the projection for Lake Mead in the coming years that sent alarm bells ringing all over the southwest. Should Lake Mead reach the level of a stagnant Deadpool, not only will millions of Arizonians, Nevadans, and Californians cease to have potable water, even the energy supply from the Hoover Dam could massively decline, as the Department of Water Resources reports that should the water go from the lake below 900 feet, the Hoover Dam power plant would have to suspend activities. Fortunately, this isn't the case just yet. On July 14, 2023, Lake Mead still stood at 1,058 feet. This is 158 feet over the prescribed minimum water level, 
but is still 170 feet shy of the lake's maximum capacity, which stands at an impressive 1,229 feet. Lake Mead has only ever reached this level once. That was in the summer of 1983, when it filled to the brim, and water could be seen overflowing over the spillways. But since then, Lake Mead has more or less been in a state of constant decline. In July of last year, it plummeted to a measly 1,040 feet, its lowest point since April 1937, when the lake was just being filled for the first time. Throughout the latter part of last year and the first half of 2023, Mother Nature gave Lake Mead some reprieve. Unprecedented precipitation across the country and heavy snowpack accumulation in the Rockies made it rise by 18 feet in a one-year period. This quick upward tick in water levels led many to believe this might be the year when we see Lake Mead's waters splashing over the spillway again. Sadly, it seems this might not be the case. Why? To explain, we have to go back a couple of months to the beginning of last year's winter season. The winter of 2022 to 2023 in North America was marked by extreme weather events that affected millions of people across the continent. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's winter outlook, this weather was influenced by a La Nina pattern that brought colder and wetter conditions to part of the northwest and northern plains, and warmer and drier conditions to parts of the southwest and southeast. However, some regions experienced weather anomalies that deviated from these expectations. One of these anomalies was the record-breaking snowfall that occurred in the western part of the United States from December 2022 to March 2023. The Rocky Mountains received up to 203 centimeters of snow, which was more than double the average amount for this period. Another weather irregularity was the series of atmospheric rivers that brought heavy rainfall and floods to California, Nevada, Arizona, and Utah during the same period. Atmospheric rivers are narrow bands of moisture-rich air that transport water vapor from tropical or subtropical regions to higher latitudes. They can produce beneficial precipitation for drought-stricken areas like Nevada and Arizona, but they can also cause destructive flooding and mudslides when they're too intense or persistent. Weather forecasters were unable to predict such a severe overflow, considering the previous droughts that had affected the southwest in preceding years. The floods overwhelmed emergency systems, resulting in over $3.5 billion in property damages by March. In the first three weeks of heavy downpours, Lake Mead's waters surged by 4.6 feet after the release of water from the spillways of Lake Powell to mitigate flooding. As spring and summer arrived, the snowmelt from the Rocky Mountains poured into the Colorado River increasing outflow into Lake Mead downstream and heightening the lake to its current level of 1,058 feet. However, Lake Mead hasn't risen a foot in the past two weeks. According to the U.S. Bureau of Reclamations, USBR, the runoff from the Rocky Mountain has now plateaued, meaning there will be less inflow from the Colorado River into Lake Mead, and it won't be expected to rise further till at least next year's spring. By then, its water levels would have reduced considerably due to consumption and evaporation. And if the weather conditions are not as favorable next year, then the lake might just start to lose ground again. To prevent this from happening, federal and state water management authorities have proposed and implemented a number of proactive measures. Now, let's look at the advantages and the shortcomings of these measures. Have they been sustainable or even feasible? Water managers have recommended refilling some of the smaller reservoirs in the Colorado River system. Previously, these reservoirs, including Blue Mesa, Navajo, and Flaming Gorge, had been depleted to support Lake Mead and Lake Powell and ensure they maintain the necessary levels for hydropower production. The plan, which followed the framework established by the Colorado River Compact of 1922, divides the Colorado Basin into upper and lower basin states and introduces three tiers of water cutbacks triggered by the fluctuating levels of the Colorado River. 
The lower basin, where Lake Mead is situated, activates a Tier 1 cutback when the lake falls below 1,075 feet. If the water level drops further below 1,045 feet, Tier 2 measures are implemented, and Tier 3 comes into play when the lake reaches 1,025 feet. The severity of the water shortages corresponds to each tier, with Tier 1 requiring a reduction of 190,000 acre-feet per year in water usage for the state of Arizona. Tier 2 would necessitate a decrease of 318,000 acre-feet, and Tier 3 would demand a reduction of over 480,000 acre-feet. To address the issue of depleting water along the Colorado River, the Reclamation Bureau conducted a high-flow experiment in April of this year. Over three days, they released 39,500 cubic feet of water per second from Glen Canyon Dam into Lake Mead. The experiment aimed to replenish sandbars and beaches downstream by transporting accumulated sediments. However, this experiment resulted in a significant increase in Lake Mead's water level by the experiment's conclusion on April 27th. While the Bureau has conducted similar high-flow experiments since 1996, the last one took place in November 2018. These experiments are only authorized when Lake Powell has ample water supply for the Upper Colorado Basin, ensuring a surplus remains. The Southern Nevada Water Authority projects that this experiment will increase Lake Mead's water level by another 10 feet, thereby supporting hydropower generation, irrigation, and municipal water supply. On May 22nd, the Biden administration facilitated a fresh conservation agreement between the seven basin states to safeguard the Colorado River and address the impacts of drought and climate change. The proposed plan seeks to conserve a minimum of 3 million acre-feet of water by 2026. Consequently, the federal body in charge of water projects has recommended several alternatives to alleviate the strain on Lake Mead and keep its water on the rise. Two noteworthy proposals are the Water Supply Alternative and the Reservoir Storage Alternative. The Water Supply Alternative focuses on maximizing water deliveries to urban and industrial areas, implementing shortages only when Lake Mead's capacity is insufficient. On the other hand, the reservoir storage alternative aims to retain more water in Lake Mead by reducing water deliveries and increasing shortages, favoring power generation, agriculture, and recreational needs. As water scarcity continues to loom over the Colorado River system, if the latter alternative is implemented, it'll mean states will have to source other means of water for municipal consumption and farmland. While this is not entirely impossible, in the arid southwest this proposition is comparable to getting blood out of a stone. You see, for the better part of the last century, most states in the southwest and midwest have supplemented their allocation of the Colorado River with underground water from complex aquifer systems that have endured for millennia. But this lifeline for human development and preservation of vital ecosystems is rapidly depleting, unable to keep pace with the escalating demands of a burgeoning population. The arid southwest, with its sprawling cities and vast natural ecosystems, teeters on the brink of a catastrophic water crisis. States such as Arizona and Nevada, once heralded for their rapid growth and prosperity in the face of water scarcity, now have to deal with the grim reality of overuse and dwindling groundwater resources. In less than a century, the Southwest has witnessed the relentless depletion of ancient underground reservoirs that had accumulated over thousands of years. These vast water stores, essential for sustaining streams, rivers, and the delicate riparian and wetland habitats, are now on the precipice of collapse. The primary drivers behind diminishing groundwater supplies in the region have been unrestrained municipal consumption, climate change, and irrigation. In the absence of human use, groundwater aquifers such as the La Paz County Aquifer in Arizona naturally increase as water from Lake Mead and other streams and rivers seeps into the ground. However, the relentless march of human development has resulted in escalating withdrawals for agriculture, industry, and municipal demands. 
These withdrawals far exceed natural recharge rates, leading to a significant decline in groundwater levels, with some areas experiencing drops of over 200 feet. A significant challenge faced by Lake Mead is the unsustainable water usage attributed to multiple alfalfa farms in Arizona. Alfalfa cultivation demands a substantial amount of water, and the controversy stems from the crop's low value and its primary use as animal feed. Arizona, being one of the nation's major alfalfa producers, reportedly uses around 25% of its water allocation from Lake Mead to irrigate alfalfa fields. This raises concerns, as the waters intended for densely populated cities such as Phoenix and Tucson, which house thousands of residents. According to CNN, some residents and local officials in La Paz County have reported that their wells are running dry or have seen their water moving due to excessive pumping by neighboring farms. The issue at hand is that alfalfa, unlike other crops or industries, generates limited revenue and employment opportunities. Alfalfa farming also depletes groundwater levels, causing land subsidence, infrastructural damage, and increasing flood risk. Future scenarios for the Southwest paint a bleak picture of warmer temperatures, surging populations, and potentially reduced rainfall. Although future precipitation remains uncertain, some models suggest a decrease of 10 to 15 percent. Climate models project temperature increases between 3.5 and 9 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century, and population projections expect an additional 4.8 million people to inhabit Arizona and Nevada by 2030. The convergence of these changes will adversely impact snowpack, evaporation rates, energy consumption, pumping activities, and winter storms, all of which contribute to the viability of Lake Mead. Despite the notable increase in Lake Mead's water flow over the past year, both government officials and climate scientists remain doubtful of its enduring viability. With a burgeoning population constantly depleting the water reserves, the lake is bound to face another draining episode. As the historic Colorado River Compact expires three years from now, this further underlines the need for cooperation among states in implementing sustainable water practices. Thank you for watching. The future of America's largest reservoir hangs in the balance as it faces the challenges of mega droughts and growing water demands. Do you think proactive measures and conservation efforts will be enough to save it? Share your thoughts with us in the comments, and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as you do.